If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this beautiful episode of Mind Pump. Ooh, it's gorgeous. For the first 40 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. Uh, we start off by talking about punishing people for doing good things. What? Do you do that? I uh, bet you uh, do. Uh, uh. Sounds like a terrible strategy. We talk about Adam's stinky fish burp. <laughs> I got uh. schooled today. Uh, and why Gross, he should be dude. using Omax fish oil capsules instead. It is uh, Omax is one of our new sponsors and partnerships. Thanks for finding finding that one for us. High quality stuff. If you go to try Omax, that's T-R-Y-O-M-A-X dot com forward slash mind pump, you'll get a free box of Omax. We have hooked you up. Best fish oil you can find on the market. Then we talked about legislation to allow companies to repair and make accessories for Apple products. Ugh, so frustrating. Uh, (laughs) More regulations. We talk about how humans have a tendency to focus on the negative And new studies showing that some common over-the-counter medications have side effects like depression, believe it or not. And then we talked about Ronnie Coleman, the greatest Mr. Olympia ever, and how uh, bad shape he looks. Poor guy, can barely move. Very, very sad. Mm. Um, We also mentioned uh, Organifi for a second. Um, We are sponsored by them. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump, enter the code Mind Pump, you'll get 20% off all of their products. Then we get to the questions. The first question was, this person would like to know some of our suggestions to help survive an injury. You know, like don't lose gains, mobility, and maintain some sanity. Uh, We give some good advice there. Adam talks about his personal experiences through his Achilles tear. Mm. The next question was, is the best philosophy to bulk and then cut? The answer, it depends Find out why it depends in that segment of this episode. The next question was, does working out affect your sex drive positively or negatively? Well, weight training definitely, if you do it right, can make you a horny son of a gun. Right, Doug? <laughs> yeah. Right, Doug? Or you can, them use, them or you can use a Brain FM. That's Justin's tactic. Yeah, yeah, Justin, and actually both you guys use your Brain FM while you're having sex. Use Focus. Hey, that was a great tip. Yes. Right. Uh, if I you go to with it. brain.fm forward slash mind pump, you will get a hookup for these uh, sounds that apparently help you have sex. Focus on that sex. And the final question, uh, what is our opinion on teachers posting pictures of themselves competing in bikini competitions. Do we think that's like inappropriate because they're working with kids or do we think they they just want attention? Uh, And also this month, all month long, all month long, we have taken the price of Maps Anywhere and cut it in half, 50% off. Maps Anywhere is our Maps program. That can be done with minimal exercise equipment. You can do it anywhere. You can do it at home. You can do it on the road. Very effective Very easy to use. Again, that's 50% off. We also have bundles which are designed uh, to get people through long periods of time for different types of adaptations. So to be specific, a bundle is when we take multiple MAPS programs, put them together, and discount them. The most popular bundle is the Super Bundle. That's a year of exercise programming. It's a lot of MAPS programs that you follow one after another for the entire year. Your body changes and progresses the entire time. That is 30% off all those prices. So we bundle them and take 30% off. It's a great deal. Uh, For that and all of the other products that we have, go to mindpumpmedia.com. Dude, you know what's funny? The vast majority of people, if they listen to their voice, they record their voice, and then they listen to their voice on recording, everybody's like, I hate my voice. Ah. And then you have Adam. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's like, oh, hello there. Hey, I like listening to myself. Uh, where have you been? <laughs> Did it take you guys any time to get used to hearing yourself on, yeah. like hearing your own voice? Mm, maybe initially. Yeah, it was awkward at first mm-hmm. to hear yourself and just the way that, you know, you sound in... Because in... you sound different in your head. Totally. You know yeah. what I mean? Hmm. You, d- you sound different in your I head. Don't, I don't know if I agree I mean, it's I a true, 100% true. I think the headphones what do you mean it's really how, how helps. Can, that's your truth, maybe. No, 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 no. <laughs> what do you mean no? No, no, no. no. That, that's, yeah, a, that's a true thing. You tell me my truth? No, like, no, no. When my you, voice sounds just like it. The way my voice sounds on radio sounds like it. Because you have headphones head. on. When you, if you don't wear headphones and listen to your, your voice on recording, and then you do listen to a recording, 
people, th- this is oh, this is common. People won't even recognize their voice half the time, or sometimes they'll be like, I can't believe I sound like that. Well, you've heard that before, yeah. haven't you? Well, it's mainly on video. That's where I used to get feel like a little yeah. bit awkward because yeah. I was like, oh, I sound like that. Yeah. Well, awkward, weird, all that stuff. But, different, but I get through it. What I liked about it is, I mean, talk about. We've kind of mentioned this on the show. I've never, and I've all, I've all, I've always been, not always, for a long time, I've been a growth minded self-aware type of a person and nothing has been able to accelerate that like sitting down and listening to your own voice for two totally. hours of course so because you get to hear sometimes how you know like oh shit i sound like an idiot there yeah or, or what I, am I, why do i sound like i got so irritated for no reason or whatever it, it really makes you yep. it makes you question your own beliefs right like i i said that and then like when you hear it a second time right the first time it comes out of your mouth mm-hmm. you obviously hear it, but then when you hear it a second time and you're just purely listening or you're getting sucked into the show. Mm-hmm. It's true. Listening to how you think your way through things right. and, and explain things is really interesting. Well, there's two ways. To- I loved it. And that's the part yeah. I, I, I'm not, I'm definitely not the person who, and we joke about, you know, oh, it's like the sound of my voice. Like, no, I don't listen and go like, oh yeah. Or <laughs> I don't care. I mean, we were just talking about, we were talking shit about someone. We were listening to a podcast, somebody we know. And it's so funny to listen to them talk because they, they add adjectives and verbs into their mm. like extra ones that don't that are not needed. Oh, that's a, just that's right. just poor communication. Well, it, but the funny part is that this person I'm talking about, you know, prides themselves on being a great communicator. Mm. And really, what I see when I see someone like that is I see somebody who's who cares more about how they sound to themselves than really getting a point across, and like somebody being able to like it's not like that for me. No words. You can definitely use wor- lots of words and eloquent words and descriptive words to make your point more effective or to mm-hmm. illustrate your point more effective. Or you could just use a bunch of words and throw them in because they sound good, but all you've done is now added an additional 30 seconds or five minutes to something that could have been explained in a short period of time. We hear that all the time, yeah. especially when people are smart. Like you, th- you hear people who are really smart and they'll just – Say lots of words, and you're like, okay, so in other words, yeah. this is what you're saying, which you could have totally articulated in like half the time. Mm-hmm. It makes it way less of, makes you way less of an effective. This, this is what an attention span you have to consider too, of like your audience. Like, well, it's, it's really just not considering your audience at that point. You just love the sound of your own voice and how you explain things. You would think though that they would hear that listening to themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because there's two two things that I've learned from listening to myself. One is. Sometimes I think I'm doing a good job when I'm not. Mm-hmm. So then I hear it and I go, oh shit, I thought I sounded better or I thought I sounded, you know, I thought I was, had a good opinion, but now I can tell that I, it was my ego that was talking, whatever. It's easier to hear that when you hear yourself talking. And the other thing that I learned, and we've all done this, is sometimes you judge yourself so harshly and then you hear it back and you're like, oh, I didn't sound bad at all. Totally. So it's like two sides, right? Those two sides where you're like, oh, I sucked right there. And then you listen afterwards and you're like, Oh, that wasn't that bad. Well, some of it too. Like I, I always try to work on painting a better picture. Obviously, the story part of it has been a struggle for me, you know, and that's something I've noticed that I've been really trying to work on and listening to people. But you can get lost if you put so much effort into the description, all the details. Um, so it, you know, like having it like just a certain amount of time mm-hmm. is crucial. Do you think in the in the future when everything's being recorded? Because I'm sure at some point. We're going to have on contact lenses that literally record everything you see, or you'll have like a... Yeah, I think it's going to become an amazing tool. Do you think it's going to make Isn't everybody like the super... Circle? Did they have that? Was it in the eye? I, I know no, no, no. The circle it was like just video cameras, cameras everywhere, everywhere yeah, that yeah. were, and that was more. No, like, there was an episode on Black Mirror that was like that. Where that's right. Everything you saw was recorded, and then you can go back and rewind it and whatever. Zoom in and everything yeah. on the background. You know, it might just make people hyper anxious and hypercritical you know what i mean it might totally. make people well no feel- doubt it'll have good and bad everything always does right yeah. there's always a bad side of the good i but i think personally for myself i think that would be it would be an awesome tool and resource mm-hmm. like i it'd be so neat to have a day where like let's say i mean especially i think back to things that i used to have to do like having a meeting where i'm leading a team of 15 or 20 people and you know i walk out of that meeting it would be so rad to go back later in the day and go like let's yeah, like, see how everybody was affected. Too. Yeah, I'll be able to what exactly the reactions go back and be like, oh, oh shit, I see what I did what over a here tool. to Susie. Dude, like, what a, she didn't take that. That's what well. happened in that episode of Black Mirror. Yeah, the dude th- they had this house party in this episode. Did you guys, did you guys watch it? You watched it, right, mm-hmm. Justin? I you, watched it. So they're having like a house party, and they have this dude that's invited over, and this guy's wife. 
he kind of gets this feeling like, are they flirting? Or what? So then later on that mm-hmm. night, he mm-hmm. reviews the video and he notices every time this dude makes a joke, she laughs like excessively. Every yeah. time they, she smiles at him and he's like reviewing the video to see how she responded to that dude. Oh my God, so much of so, that will happen. Well, and that's the yeah. bad, right? That's where it gets, it'll get in trouble is when people's insecurities come out in that and then they go back and hang on our thing. It, it's going to be interesting. Do you think with a tool like that that you'll find that you're that when you rewind and listen to the arguments that you have, that you were more right, that you were going to win more of them or lose more of them. You know what I'm saying? What do you think? Do you think you'll watch them and be like... I think initially lose. Yeah, you'll be like, damn, she was right. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> it was acting like an asshole. Yeah. Unless you're you already just- hypercritical. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't know. For some people, I think it, it won't matter. It'll just confirm their argument more. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, twist it. I think you have to first have the desire to change want to find what's wrong what did you what does jordan peterson say, say all the time like look for all the make friends with what you don't know yeah no he said he talks about be like seeking all the things or seeking all the failures seeking all the wrong stuff and everything instead of always oh, searching right, to be right, right. right. Yeah, instead yeah. of always searching that's be, easy it's easy to look at it's easy to figure out to things say, that you're doing wrong right right it's, it's then it is to try to find the right answer all the time right instead of trying to find the answer try and find all the wrong answers that's yeah, what i'm saying yeah, so yeah, yeah. so thinking like that there's not a lot of people that process that the same way where they look at themselves and go like what What's everything wrong with what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you have that attitude and you're going back listening to the way you communicate something and go, what's everything wrong with what I'm saying versus what are all the things I did good and what I'm what right there and then mm-hmm. hanging on that, mm-hmm. I think you have to have that. You have to have that yeah, attitude. You can sort of going. knock those down. Otherwise, you listen to, you could re- would rewind, you'd listen to your argument with your wife or your girlfriend or whatever the case may be, and you would hang on all the points that you said right to reconfirm why you're so right. Mm-hmm. You, you know, know what, what ha- you know what would That's happen. That's what would happen, right? You know what would happen, right? You'd take the video of the argument and you'd still argue over it. You'd be like, look, look, right here, you see what I'm right? And she'd be like, no, 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 but you were... And then you would say, okay, fine, let's send the video to five people. <laughs> let's get an outside opinion. You would start doing that, right? You'd start posting, all right, uh, th- you know, vote yes if I was right, vote oh you know, no if she was right. And you'd start getting consensus. God, I no, thinking- I had to share something that we were listening to, right? We were listening to Peterson talk yesterday, and he said something so powerful. I mean, he says stuff powerful every time you listen to the guy, so he's fucking incredible. But something that really hit home for me, and it, maybe it was because we were driving home, and we were coming home from this trip that we just went on. Oh, I know what you're going to say. And, you know, he he talks about how much of the time in our lives that we're, we're so focused on you know, this big event that I have coming up, you know, I've got this huge event and so much of my thought and reading and focus and and preparation Mm -hmm. and everything Mm -hmm. is surrounded by this one hour meeting, or maybe if it's even a vacation and a trip for three days or whatever, you know, and you put all this, like, it's so important, all this importance around it. And in the grand scheme of things or the looking at it as uh, uh, if you were to fraction out your life like how much of it does it rep really represent your total life mm-hmm. and when you look at it like that it's like a, a pebble or sand and you're it's so yeah. tiny and fractional but when you look at all the other things that people just don't even think about that mm-hmm. are a big part of your life and you use the example of coming home mm-hmm. like just coming home and the way you greet your wife or your partner every single day that's a big fucking part of because it life. happens every day it happens every day and it lasts it's way more important than anything it's else. so goddamn important that if you and you, and so much of us don't get that right part, and it really hit me home hard mm. because a lot of times it's it's tough to work hard all day long and then come home and then be able to completely shift mm-hmm. from that space that you're currently in, mm. and and then to walk in that door, welcome your wife or your girlfriend, and completely change mm-hmm. that yeah. dynamic if you have a bad day. And how many people let that bleed into that? And then he made another comment on not being aware of that and realizing that you you're potentially punishing your partner. Like what if, what if Katrina all day long did all kinds of incredible things for me, helped me around the house or was in a really good mood, excited to see me with that. And I, at the same time, I just happen to have the worst day at work or whatever. And I walk in that door and I'm quiet or I forget to kiss her Hi, or I, maybe I don't snap at her, or, I, something. Yeah, or maybe I'm short with her, and mm-hmm. you know, because she and she asked me to help out with something, and mm-hmm, I just don't mm-hmm. want to do it right now because I'm tired and I'm exhausted. And then all of a sudden, not only did I did I fuck up that one that 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 ten minute interaction right there, but I also uh, am punishing her when she's for doing good things. That's right. That's the worst thing you could possibly do is punish someone when they're doing something that you want them to do. This happens a lot in relationships when you have resentment that's built up. So you'll have a couple that fights or whatever and they're really irritated with each other 
And then they go away and they get over it and everything be, is cool. And sometimes someone feels like, okay, now's a good opportunity to hammer on that because everything's safe now. I can I can hammer on them. Right. And it, that's the wrong time to do it because you're punishing someone for being in a good mood or for treating you well. And you start to train that in somebody. And it happens mm. with your – you could do that with your kids. It's, you, can right. it's, it's, yeah, you can't go – you can't revisit something that happened a while back. Like I, that's – as far as disciplining is concerned as well, like, you know, in parenting. And like there, there's certain things that uh, in the moment, you know, this is where we need to make a point of this. And education needs mm-hmm. to happen um, right now because it's, it's – you know – it revisiting it that's not fair while you know you're in a totally different place and a different mindset or, or, or maybe not only, you, it's not even that it's it's not only that it's just you know you, you have no idea what her day and all the things that she had accomplished or done or potentially had done for you unselfishly that has happened throughout that day and because the, what's happening currently at that moment for you in your life you're so selfishly focused on it that you didn't you don't you don't even take into consideration potentially what her day was led up to that and then when you guys get into some sort of an argument over something very small like you as she asked a favor or asked you to do something and you snapped or you didn't want to do it you don't realize how much damage you're doing because of of what all the stuff that you didn't see and you didn't even know about yeah, yeah. and no a lot of times we just don't even think and process that that was such a big moment for me no that- it's you just like when parents you know like you got a lot of people who work a lot right and they don't see their kids that much but they think oh it's okay because every three months i take my kids on a vacation and we have quality time together that's not nearly as important as breakfast that you have every morning with your kids i mean you have 15 minutes of breakfast every morning that you add that up over the course of a year and that's a lot of time, and that's daily. Yeah. That's way more important than the one trip you take every once in a while with your kids where you think that's quality time. It's those everyday interactions. That's it's where ha- the impact happens. That, because it's every day. It's yeah. a bit, it's, it feels like it's trivial, but it's actually a big part of your life. It's interesting because you know the, the coming home thing was big for me because I've recognized that this year in, in particular that this is something that I knew coming home, I would bring a certain energy home. And, you know, whether I was tired, whether I was frustrated, whether it was whatever it was, I had and I started applying that discipline of like kind of waiting in in my car and and gathering my my wits about me and and understanding that, yeah, I turn it on for my for my work, but I'm not turning it on for my family. Right. And so, like, I have to really understand, like, how to come into the into, you know, through the door, you know, say hi uh, you know, kiss my kids, like, like get into whatever they're doing and then just be there. And then after that, you know, we can, I can kind of like work on whatever I need to work on or whatever, you know, but it, it, it's so important. Man. It's extremely important. So anyway, oh, that was a powerful statement. It was powerful. Man, sure. Dude, you're, uh, earlier, I'm going to, I'm going to call you out, Adam, you, that fish burp you did earlier was <laughs> fucking terrible. Bro. Well, <laughs> well, dude, I've, I've just kicked up my fish oil. Yeah. Because I, I haven't been getting a lot. I mean, normally it's like, it used to be a, a pretty regular thing that Katrina and I are at our sushi spot at least once or twice. And we normally have it in a, at least another meal or two within the week. And, you know, I've talked about this on the podcast before. Oh, that's when I'm, I'm taking my omega. So lately I've been taking them a little bit more. So, you know, that that's might be a sign with, of, uh, that the fish oils that you're taking go rancid. So when they do tests on fish oil, I don't know if you guys know this, many of them are rancid. You don't know cause it's in a capsule, but if you, they go bad, they go bad. If you puncture it, you can smell, you'll be able to smell how fishy and Ugh. bad they are. And the other thing too, is a lot of them use these fillers. So you'll buy a fish oil, but you know, 40 or 50% of it is our other types of fats or saturated fats or whatever. And it's not the actual pure, you know, what you're after, which is the omega-3 fatty acids, the DHA and the, you know, what the other one, whatever the other one's called, I forgot. You can actually do this test where you take your fish oil and you put it in the freezer. And if it freezes and it's cloudy, then you know it's got a lot of filters because fish oil, pure uh, fish oil will stay clear. Oh, see, I thought wow, I thought it was just normal that I always get fish burps from it. No, and then the, the other thing is it might be going rancid. So like Omax, Omax is the the, the fish oil company that uh, you know we, we've been kind of talking with. Their uh, fish oils come in blister packs. So they're sealed individually. Oh, see, I haven't tried any of their stuff yet. I just have some generic brand that I've been using forever that I don't even know the name of it. No, dude. Just like anything else, like quality matters. And I think what's happened with the, especially with the supplement industry, is that we've, we'll think it's all the same. So we'll be like, oh, if it's vitamin C, it's all the same. Or if it's fish oil, it's all the same. Or if it's protein, it's all the same. 
But that's not the case. That's not the case at all, especially in the industry, the, the supplement wow. industry, which has just notorious for bad, you know, bad practices and stuff Dude, like that. Dude, those fish burps are because it's rancid? I mean, it, that's so nasty. It may be. It may be for a lot of people. So if you get really, really good fish oil, many times people won't get that. Yeah. Get that kind well, of I mean, when I was doing it, yeah, I totally noticed that. That's why I was like never super stoked to take you know fish oil capsules. Well, you it. said you were talking to that company. Or did you close that deal? Or are we gonna? Yeah, do- no, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna do a little short trial with them, but they're very very high quality. I think their their fish oil was something like ninety something percent pure, which is crazy because a lot of times they'll test fish oils and it'll be something like sixty something percent. Mm. So it's very very pure. Um, it's, that's a, that's it's super a, is, good quality. Is that the same brand that Ben works with? I know I've heard the name. Greenfield. Greenfield, yeah. Yep, yep. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Benny always, he always yeah. vets good stuff. That's true. Yeah, Ben's got it. 94%. Is that quality. where you heard about it first? Because yep. I'd never even heard about it before yep, that. Yep, yep, He gave him a, a kind of a his, his stamp of approval or whatever. But, I mean, fish oil is interesting. Omega-3s are interesting, you know. Um, I have a family member who whose cholesterol and lipid levels were all over the place. Mm-hmm. And the doctor prescribed fish oil. Yeah. But, you know. You know, it wasn't that long ago that doctors weren't prescribing that. It's pretty crazy now that they're actually telling them to take fish oil. Like five or six years ago, they weren't doing that. Maybe even ten years ago, they weren't doing that. Yeah. But now they're giving, they're telling them to take it because it, they notice that it, it affects their lipids in a in a positive way. Well, one of the one of the better ways too for infl- battle inflammation too, right? So it, yes, and if you now you can go, you can actually up the dose, and this is depends on the individual, but you can up the dose of fish oil and, with turmeric. Which is one of my favorite combinations. If I'm really inflamed, and it, that shit is potent, man. It's like taking a an ad. It's like taking Advil or something like that. It takes a couple days. It just sounds like in, a gross mix though together, like <laughs> turmeric and o- capsules. Yeah, capsules. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, you capsules put it right are, down the hatch. I want to strangle ever yeah. right now because he he always says we do. I use the Organifi turmeric capsules all the time. He uses actual the powder. And he makes it in the blender all the time. It's now stained my blender fucking <laughs> Oh, <much>. dude. <laughs> Gross. Oh, People don't realize that. I want to choke you him know out, they, dude. I'm like, it's disgusting now. They used to use turmeric to uh, dye clothes back in the day. Dude, it is so strong. No. It'll, it's, yeah, well, it'll it's, stain it's, the fuck dude, out of Dude, it's staining plastic. Yep. This oh, is wow. my, my whatchamacallit blender, you know what I'm saying? Your yeah. Ninja or whatever the hell. I, Vitamix was what Vitamix, I used. Vitamix, yeah. Dude, the thing is all stained like this ugly looking <laughs> orange, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't. I mean, I don't notice. It's not like changing. It's, it's not just, appetizing Yeah, now. right. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I literally was making one of my shakes last night and I'm, I'm pouring it in there and I'm like, Whoa, this just looks gross. It's like oh. in my orange blender. Hey, did you did you end up surprising Katrina? Did she know that we were going to come home early? I totally did. come home It was really cool because uh i guess uh <laughs> everett and his daughter had just been by there and uh they left and i was coming back in and right when i was Cause coming because everybody thought we were coming back today right mm-hmm. but we actually came back a day early because we finished all of our work and had everything done yeah it was and good you didn't tell her you just walked no in. no it was so good too how how crazy is that i decided i wasn't going to tell her i wanted to surprise her and then how neat was that that we that's why i felt the message was for me i was like this this message from jordan right now that we're we just happened to oh all about it. how you come home uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, it's interesting right right we almost blew it for you too i was yeah. like talking with sal ah, all loud outside <laughs> well it was great when she was actually listening to the podcast when i walked in so no it, way yeah so it totally worked out that we were loud oh, outside she couldn't hear her nothing like so that. so what happened you walk in she sees you she's like she actually had her head down and she said oh did you forget something and I, was, and I just kind of stood there and looked at her and she and then she waited to look up because she was right in the middle of packaging something and then she looked up and she's like oh my god what are you doing here <laughs> I like, came home to see you babe yeah just yeah, for she you was super and then she called that guy and was like don't come over <laughs> yeah, so she said, just hit him in the closet Quick, go hide by the couch <laughs> yeah poor guy's holding he's holding his pee all night in the, in the closet like oh I got away he's from pretending to go. he's a lamp over <laughs> there. in the corner. <laughs> what a nightmare! Could you imagine? Uh, Could you imagine coming home to surprise your girl, and you open the door and she's just she's just. Isn't getting, that how it happens most of the time? That's like, when that's when people, people die yeah. because I feel like you, oh, man, right. you get caught so off guard and it becomes such a you become so primal in yeah. your instincts. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Justin's more likely to kill somebody <laughs> in that situation out of all of us. I mean, I would put a definitely put some hurt on 
on on a dude for that. <sighs> Maybe. But, but at the same time, yeah, it's just like, ah, no, I guess we're done. Yeah. You know? like, I guess we're done. Dude, you I'm never you never know how you'll react to something like that. Right. It's a hard thing to predict because it's so... I try not to think about it too much. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Uh, it's just like, you want to talk about ruining the first five minutes like, when you walk boom, in boom, 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 be like, thinking about your wife fucking somebody else uh, all the time. Uh, I'd rather get kicked in the nuts for a year. Yeah. 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 Like, that what was that better. movie where the dude comes home and his wife's having sex and then a guy comes out of the closet? There's oh, another guy. Oh, that's uh There's like two or three dudes. That's a hilarious movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, the yeah. doorbell rings and he opens the door. Yeah, and yeah, like, it's, she's it's like a total swinger. I'm here for the gangbang. Yeah, that's right. Here for the gangbang. Oh my god. That is an epic intro. Absolutely uh, terrible. <laughs> Did you say you had something you want to share? You had an article or something, Adam? Oh, yeah. I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to uh share something with you guys. I didn't know uh, I don't know when this happened, although I, I was reading another article that led me down the rabbit hole here. Um but they uh, legislation has now been introduced in 17 states, um, and basically what this is, so Hawaii and Oklahoma are the most recent states to introduce laws that would give consumers an alternative to manufacture service departments when something breaks, says a report. So basically what this is, is they have made it to where, because Apple's kind of had a monopoly on this, so are some other brands, and Apple's the biggest um, culprit of this. We all know this, right? They they change the plugs. All their parts only fit mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Apple parts. Right. So this makes it in, impossible for a third party to come in and try and... Create oh, accessories and c- shit. Yes, create accessories or repair parts. And so they actually passed a law saying that Apple has to give up some of that those those things so other companies then can come and... A law? Well, they passed legislation here. It says... <laughs> In 17 states, that's right here. so stupid right. to me. Apple, Toyota, hey, John Deere, hey, and others have lobbied against the law, saying that the letting the third parties crack the shell on consumer devices opens the door for hackers and device. Uh, the right to repair people say manufacturers are simply trying to keep their monopoly on the lucrative business of repairing their own. It's stuff. they're fucking figuring it out anyway. You know, like I always see accessory products to Apple phones and Apple computers. There's, there's, there's always somebody that can But check this out. This is such innovate. A, this is such a big deal and such a huge a huge market that the first this is just now in place, right? And this company, I will, let me see if I can find the name of the company. It's called I think uh Back Market, I want to say is what it's called. They received like 400 million venture capitalist money and then uh they got this law went through and got passed and I hate that. Yeah. Instantly, like a hundred million dollar, hundred of mil- course, hundred million dollars in revenue. This is this is an example of crony. Like this is crony capitalism. Those companies would not succeed without that legislation. Yeah. Crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. such so stupid. How weird is that? You're going to a company that's succeeding on its own. They're not right. forcing anybody they're by do- the product. They're doing their own thing, and they're like, no, you need to make your product like this. We're going to pass a law. No, what? Yeah. It's well, why it gets by is because the consumer just sees it for like, I mean, it's way better for the consumer because now what's happening is lots of consumers, yeah, the th- consumer thinks it's better. They think it's better. I know you're yeah, nodding yeah, your yeah, head yeah, the opposite, but think, think a little bit smaller. Don't think that big yeah, yet. You know what I'm saying? As, yeah. a, as just a simple person who wants a, a cheaper iPhone. So you can go get this iPhone 10 that's been, uh, you know, fixed and sold for a hundred bucks. So that's what's happening right now. Oh, They're wow. saying one out of every 10 iPhone X's, X, iPhone X's, how can I say that? iPhone X's that were built were actually, uh, you know, remanufactured or fixed or were broken phones. So a lot of people now are going that way. Not everybody can afford a thousand dollar iPhone X, but one that's been refurbished or been fixed that somebody else basically threw away or sent off. Now they can purchase it for five, six hundred dollars or whatever. Oh my gosh, crazy though, huh? No, I can't yeah. believe. Well, anytime something gets really big, they got to put their hands in it. You know what I mean? And that's what they're doing. Well, I won't lie that it's it's frustrating as shit. That I mean, it's but it's. I think I also respect it. It's, it's going to reduce innovation. It takes away. It, it it's going to take away Apple's uh, money for reinvestment into what they see that their market actually desires. And it's also going it, to. It's also it's also creating a situation where we don't know. There may be there may be companies that are looking at this and trying to figure ways around it and compete. Yeah. But now they're now now they're done because legislation just gave it to someone else. Because there's they they've picked winners and losers. I guarantee you, there was some company, some third party companies lobbying those state governments to pass that, and they're the ones that are benefit. They're, they're of beneficiaries course. of yeah. it. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Of course. Oh, that's so frustrating. I mean, it's 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 their what their argument or what they're trying to do is to keep it to where uh, Apple doesn't. And there's just one example. There's other companies too, but you know, keep Apple from having a monopoly yeah. that they own the repair industry too because. 
if you have an iPhone but and it's it breaks, their own product. But there is no there is no monopoly by the <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> there's other, there's lots of other products. They you can created buy the product. The only reason why they're so and big, the infrastructure. Yeah, the only reason why they're so big and make a lot of money is because they're good. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's the only reason, and it's frustrating. Uh, sure, it's frustrating when like you upgrade and you you have to get like a new plug. F- you know th- that kind of sucks, but it's premium so quality you, you what, that what, they can control. What what led me down this rabbit hole? I think it was first we were just talked about this at the beach house, and I I believe that episode goes up tomorrow night, Doug, or Sunday night. Sunday night. The be- we did a little, kind of a random episode that's not really mind pump health and fitness stuff, just us while we we're out the beach, kind of give back to you guys. And I actually was talking about. Um, I was kind of telling you guys what sports teams can do now with athletes. And you're like, oh, that's really cool. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah. I was talking about how, you know, more than likely that the Warriors did some backdoor deals and talking to Durant. How crazy is this? I open up this morning my, um, was it, uh, Hustle, my Hustle uh, article that I get. And I'm reading and it's about said Hustler Kevin for Durant. Was it's, in a, that one, right? it's about Kevin Durant. Uh-huh. And being an investor with mm-hmm. these other VCs in a, a tech company, what was it? It was like an insurance company or something. Of course. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember what it was, but it's a big startup company that's projected to be, you know, a multi million, $100 million company, and he's investing it. And it's like, that. I'm, it obviously doesn't 100% confirm what I was saying, but it, it just shows you that's probably what's happening right. behind closed doors with these guys when they're when they're negotiating these big, huge, you know, multi-million dollar. Contracts. It's just smart that's on the agent to be able to introduce yeah. the these you know players to right. to movers it's, and shakers. It's part of Why the agent, wouldn't you do it's that? It's part of the agent's job, right? Yeah, isn't the agent's job to get you paid? They're, they're trying to get, get them wealthy, up. not just you know sign a big bonus contract. It's like how do you keep that that money and how do you invest it wisely? Diversify it. Yeah, you know that's what they're trying to do. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So I was reading an article that was really it was, it was an article in a psychology uh, publication, and they were talking about like why. Why, why is it that – so they just did some polls, right? And this is a 2016 poll, I should say. 20,000 people in some of the world's richest countries. And the question was, all things considered, do you think the world is getting better or worse? And 10% in Sweden, 6% in the U.S., 4% in Germany, and 3% in France thought things were getting better. So most people thought things were getting either worse or staying the same. Now, wow. objectively speaking – Obviously, things are getting better consistently across the board, right? Like, yeah. you know, uh, the world is getting wealthier. There's way less people under the poverty line. I know that uh, there was this, these these standards that we had passed. Less people die of diseases. I mean, ever. just less war. I mean, literally, it's like the world is a lot better today than it was 20 or 30 years ago. Didn't they cure polio? Yeah, and in this in this in this article, they're talking about like why is it that humans consistently think things are worse even when they're not. And they say that they think it has to do with evolution because, you know, you're, you're, we're constantly bombarded with information, right? And it's in, your bo- it's in your brain's best interest to side with the bad news than it is to focus on the good news. Right. It's that better safe than sorry mentality, right? So if I go, you know, if I go to, the, to the pond or to the lake every single day to get water every single day, every single day, and I do it for five years and I'm safe... But then in my tribe of 50 people, some dude gets eaten by an alligator. My brain is going to play, play better safe than sorry and be like, don't go to that pond anymore. Don't go to that lake anymore. Right, right. And so we tend to focus on the negative, which is why you never see a reporter on the news reporting from. And you know, today from this country where there is no war and violence, like they're never going to do that. It's always the bad stuff that, we're, that we focus on. It was just a fascinating article because as I'm thinking about it, I was like, wow, that is totally our tendency. Our mm-hmm. tendency is totally to be negative and totally to think of – the negative stuff because it occupies more of our of our brain space or our thinking space because it's trying to keep us safe. But the problem with today is we're not just bombarded with information that's immediately in front of us. We're at, we're you know for most of human civilization you would just hear about the news in front of you. But now it's so the world is so it's the world's so big, but now it's also so small yeah. that we can get news of some horrible shit that happened across the world right, yeah. that I normally would never hear about. Right, right. But my brain doesn't know that and it perceives it as happening right in front of me or whatever and I need to be careful. I need to be scared. And so we're walking around in this That's kind of why state I of feel, negative. Some people may feel like it's getting worse. It's just because now you understand like what's going on in the world, like, you know, world news. Like we have like access to, yeah, all these disasters and all these different events that are happening where 
you know, back in the back, you know, when we had papers and everything, they'd only cover like local news or like national news. Mm -hmm. Well, how crazy would it be to see how much that would change if all news and all information that we was providing you had the opposite spin? Mm -hmm. was about everything that was going great in the world. Yeah. Like, oh, guess what just found out over here? Someone saved this baby. You know, <laughs> yeah. like if then you turn on the news and they only reported on all the amazing things that were happening across the world, that percentage would completely flip on its mm -hmm. head. It would be the other way around. Oh, this is our fault again. This is like what the ratings d determined what the news, you know, what, what kind of news they gave us. This is why I, mean, I made that debate about why I am, I'm not always a fan of what we always say, like, oh, I like that we're bringing awareness to this. We always talk about like yeah. the Colin Kaepernick thing. I know I rubbed everybody the wrong way with that one, which I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Like, I'm not a fan of always bringing awareness to certain things or bringing light to certain well, things. Well, it's because we focus on the negative. Exactly. Because right? so that's exactly exactly what happens because a majority of the people look at sure there's a handful yeah. of people in that group that go like oh shit i didn't know that was going on mm -hmm. what can i do to be a better person in this world so i can impact the people around me so yeah. this racism doesn't continue on but then there's a whole bunch more yeah. people well see the problem is that we we consume the negative we seek it out and consume it if you know what i mean again if you're in a tribe and people are talking about all the good stuff like you're in a tribe of 30 people or 15 people and people are talking, and everybody's like, oh, I had a great day. Oh, I found some fruit over here. Oh, this is, you know, it's really cool. And then one person in the tribe is like, dude, I got bit by a lion. Everybody's going to listen to that guy. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to focus on that guy. Tell me about the lion that fucking bit you. And nobody's going to care about any of the other stories. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, that's just what we consume. Because I guarantee you, if the news would get viewed by saying good shit, they would. We just know nobody wants to watch it. Yeah. Everybody wants to hear the bad shit, even though it makes us feel terrible. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just a Does very it interesting really though, or is there a part of us that that, you know, like Jordan Peterson talks about, there's that evil inside of us also. And because most of us know that we're supposed to be good, but there is a part of us that wants to dabble in the thoughts of what would it be like bad. Maybe, mm. I don't know. Think of it like know. that. Maybe. Maybe. I don't I don't know. When I watch that stuff, I I know I'm drawn to the bad because because you just you want to know what's going on and it, you know and but like, why oh, ask be, yourself why that I th again I think it's that's that survival thing yeah. you know and I'm I'm trying to be more aware of it and by do you or do you think that's your inside your inner you know devil and angel inside of you that's that's always going to be in battle and conflict and because you know you're a good human and you would never do those things it still interests you to see it I don't know. I don't know. That's interesting. I don't necessarily derive pleasure from it, though. Well, I, again, you don't. I don't think you it, you necessarily have to. I mm. think. I mean, I think you're a good human being, and you yeah. know how to de you know how to decipher that. But I think that the natural animal instinct that draws you to that maybe that is. Because well, I that think in some ways, right? Like um, people like watching violent sports. Mm. You know, Vi I mean, think about it. Look, let's all look. I'm a big fan of of certain violent sports, like mis mixed martial arts, Dude, for example, sport, boxing. We've talked about. But why do sports we is war? Yeah, mm -hmm. sports is sports is war just in a different way. Yeah, yeah. Or glad it's, like, it's reenacted. And you know what's crazy is the the harder hitting, the more dangerous it is. The more we like it. I know. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm the closer it is to actually killing each other, the more we enjoy it. I know. I know. Yeah. Think about that. Look well, at the rise of UFC. Well, we yeah. used look to. how much it's blowing up right now for that exact reason. Well, we used to watch people kill each other. It wasn't that long ago? I mean, you know, a couple thousand years ago, the Romans had the Colosseum and right. all yeah. those games, and people were watching. That's people what I'm get saying. Killed. Are we are we drawn to it in a yeah. sense? Oh, for sure. Right. Right. For sure, there's I mean, a level of that. Yeah, and it's all about how much of that you're feeding, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're putting in mm -hmm. as input. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to kind of check yourself on that and, yeah. and see, you know, which which you're feeding the most. Exactly, exactly. All right, another another cool, not cool article. It's kind of a set. Back to the negative. <laughs> 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 negative news. Dude, negative Nancy a study news. came out that uh, they studied all these common over-the-counter over drugs, and they found that, 30, that American adults... 37% of American adults are taking common drugs that can increase the risk of a, a depression. And when you take more than one of them at a time, it increases your risk of depression by something like 15%. And some of these are like antacids, like antacids oh or, God. yeah, like just over-the-counter type of drugs that can cause... So, Matt, think about this. How many people are taking medications, over-the-counter type, like proton pump inhibitors, for example, yeah. right? Those have been linked to depression, bro. I, I'm Whoa, so thankful a, that it's what's a, a proton pump in well, here? So what is that? Like, like, like a, a, a Prilosec, Prilosec stuff yeah, for like heartburn stuff and stuff heart like that. Oh, yeah, so mm -hmm. they it regulates that process. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I don't know what it, like. I, I remember you bringing it up as far as like the the scare for dementia. Like mm -hmm. it was they were starting to 
you know, point in that direction. And I was like, no, okay, I got to get off this stuff. And like, what do I have to do? And, you know, just going through that process. I'm so glad now that's coming out. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, it's scary. Cause I was doing that every single day. Yeah. So here's, so it says some hormonal birth controls have been tied to depression, heart and blood pressure medications, proton pump inhibitors, antacids, and painkillers were among the more than 200 commonly used drugs that researchers said have depression or suicide listed as a potential effect. Now, I'm sure for most people that take one or two of them, they're probably not going to get that. But when you spread that out over millions, of, you know, 37% of Americans, right? Yeah. That's how many you know millions of people you're going to start to see a rise in some of these mental disorders for sure, right? I, I'm still I'm still stuck on and tripping on what we talked about a couple of weeks ago when we watched that with that, Adderall. Ad- 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 yes, yeah. dude. Because that being somebody who's only tried that a couple times, like I think I probably five or six times I've had Ritalin, maybe mm-hmm. four or five times I've had Adderall in my life, right? And you know, it's a very very powerful powerful thing, and the fact that we uh, allow children to to be put on that. We're less than half your body weight. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know how it makes the me same feel. dose. And, yeah. and, and I, I, and I can, I know the difference of what, you know, what someone else might say is amazing or hyper-focused or I need it or well, whatever you're, you're trying to justify or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's like, that's a very powerful, well, tr- tr- I mean, powerful tool. I've taken 10 milligrams of Ritalin and I'll feel that motherfucker and I'll feel it. That's a dose that kids will get prescribed. That's crazy to me. More, some of them will get 20 milligrams in a day, like double that. You know, that's insane. To me. That's yeah. insane. And you know, the sad and, and, part, the sad part is, is kids can't express themselves as well as adults. Mm-hmm. So if a kid's feeling anxious or, you know, having kind of negative thoughts or whatever, it, how are they going to express it? Well, it's hard enough as an adult to express that shit to other adults. Right. Imagine a kid who just doesn't know what they're feeling and mom and dad is saying, no, you got to take your medicine, you know? Yeah. It's kind of crazy the situation we're placing ourselves. No, and it's it's it, what's crazy to me is to think w- where they're all going to be in the next. It's just we haven't seen it's recently erupted to where it's at now. I yeah. mean, yeah. it's like sure it's been around for a while, but not at the level that it's at now. So we're talking no, it's about exploded. Yeah, millions. Well, more. we're just now connecting dots from all these you know habits that we've created, and I it it has to all kind of head to a point where it's like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> you know, what have we been doing? We got to really reevaluate yeah. what we're doing. The two big things I can see is that we're, we're sick, uh, you know, physically. So our bodies and our brains are kind of sick. There's maybe inflammation, you know, kind of systemic inflammation. There's uh, maybe medications that have their own. And by the way, there's no such thing as a side effect. There's just effects. Right, side effect right. is a term that they, you know, invented to make you feel like, oh, it's not. Yeah. No, they're That's just not effects. usually part of it. Yeah, but they're all effects. It is part of it. Yeah, they're all effects. But you, you know, we're kind of sick, and then on top of that, we take these medications and stuff that all that. So physically speaking, we feel these symptoms of things like anxiety, depression, paranoia, because there is a physical feeling that can that can that you can interpret as that, right? Like, if I take your brain and I reduce your serotonin and dopamine, you're going to feel the physical feelings of what depressed feels like, where you're kind of like down not motivated, tired. And then you're going to interpret that as I feel sad. You know, what's going on? You get that feedback loop. And then on top of that, you know, we're we're losing that kind of meaningfulness in our lives where, you know, more and more people are starting to think things are worthless and, and meaning. And there's no meaning behind them and just do what I want. And so you combine the two and you've got like this kind of health epidemic that's not looking so good, and you know you're starting to see the ramifications of it with the amount of people on medications and the rise of chronic illnesses that uh, we we shouldn't be having. Mm. But I do think that I do think we're more. I think it might be going in the opposite direction here pretty soon. You think so? I think so. I'm going to continue with the sad stories, man. I saw uh, the, oh, I saw that man. video of Ronnie Coleman, man. Oh man! Speaking of yeah, yeah, dude, that's really sad. Yeah, Ronnie Coleman was. Um, the greatest, I easily, I think, the greatest uh, Mr. Olympia there was by far. I don't think anybody could touch him. Just incredible, super strong, cr- crazy looking physique. Just fucked up his body with it, man. He's so bad. I was watching a video with Adam where, mm. like, he's like walking like he's totally crippled. Like, he's, oh, like, wow. he can't, like really bad. How old is he? He's only, he's not that old, right? He's 50, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Oh, you man. know? But just jacked his body up because of because of the sport. Yeah, I mean, I, it's he had he had full hip replacement. Yep, and then fused spine. Yeah, fused spine, 
and then just just to watch him walk around and move. And then I the the clip had talked about a doctor. It was it was just a real short clip of the doctor saying like how he's still lifting weights. It's probably not what's best with them, but they they're just kind of like whatever. Yeah, you could see him still hanging on. Like they showed clips of him training like kind of hard still. And I'm like, dude, oh man, why? Yeah, yeah. like why? Mm-hmm. Like what are you doing? Well, he's like got his whole identity wrapped in. it. Of course I know. Yeah, you know what I'm but saying. Yeah, like, I know. But I'm, I'm like, I, like I cannot believe yeah. that all these things would happen to you and. You you still identify so much with that that you're it's like it's tough to watch what else do you need to get you to 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 stop well you know when you push your body that it's really unfortunate when you push your body to that limit especially when you lift really really heavy the smallest inconsistencies with your movement or the smallest you know deviations in your form or the smallest you know changes in recruitment patterns that may not be favorable become Magnified, yeah. You know, everything's exaggerated. Yeah, like if I have if I have a slight problem with my form with a squat, like a slight one, like let's say it's two percent off perfect, and I'm squatting normal weight. Let's say I'm squatting 150 pounds for reps, might not make a big difference. In fact, I may never notice that it's causing a problem. But you throw 600 pounds on my back or 700 pounds on my back, that two percent becomes magnified. Yeah, and you and you can and you can fuck yourself up. Then on top of that, you throw on a bunch of anabolic steroids and stuff. Now you're pushing your body beyond yeah. what it can do naturally. You know, it's no different. Look, you're masking the signals that are warning you. Dude, something goes wrong in a car with 600 horsepower. It's usually, it, something goes wrong with the engine in a, in a car with 600 horsepower. It's usually a big fucking problem, right? Something goes wrong in your Honda Civic, you know, 150 horsepower Honda Civic. It's not going to explode the engine and need a full reconstruction. No. It's kind of like that, right? You can right? kind of limp it into the shop. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's yeah. kind of it's kind of like that, right? Yeah. Totally. So, so I I think the stronger you get and the bigger you get, the more you need to focus on these little things because you know, God, you, you just you start to fuck yourself up. You get away with them when you're not that strong, but when you start to lift, like there's that video of Coleman. Was he squatting 800 pounds? Yeah. I mean, for a bodybuilder, damn, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Bodybuilders don't do that, you know. Yeah. Insane. That's crazy. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Ali Barbara 4209 I'd love to know some of your suggestions to help survive an injury. By that, I mean how to not lose gains, mobility, and sanity. Mm. Mm. Depends on the injury. Um, But one of the biggest things that I notice when I'm out because I'm hurt or something I've suggested to clients in the past that have made a big difference, one thing we tend to do when we're immobile is we stay inside Mm. all day long. And so we're not getting any sunlight and we're not changing uh, our environment. Back in the day, a long time ago, hospitals used to do this, in fact. Hospitals would take patients on their beds and they put them outside for sun therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and people, I mean, statistically speaking, they do studies on this, people feel a lot better. So do I. When, I, when I'm when i sick, if I just go out oh, in the my sun. My wife tells me that all the time. She takes patients and makes sure like, to get them outside, to get them mm-hmm. sun, to get them fresh air. And man, it's, it's therapy. Absolutely. Now, as far as losing gains and all that stuff, it depends on the injury. But if you have an injured body part like your knee, for example, let's say you hurt your knee and you can't do anything with your, with your legs, you can still train the rest of your body. And, and what you'll find is, although you'll, you will lose gains in your legs because you can't work them out, there is this carryover systemic anabolic effect that you get from training the rest of your body. So in other words, you'll lose less muscle in your legs if you train your upper body than if you just did nothing. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So training the other parts of your body is probably is probably a good thing while you're injured rather than mm-hmm. just doing nothing at all where, you're, where the whole anabolic effect is lost and everything goes catabolic. And then you start to really start to deteriorate. Right. Isn't the law of radiation, it, it affects, like, even if you're working your upper body, it's yep. going to affect your lower body and, and it's going to be stimulated on that level. Yep. But well, yeah. Years ago, when I dislocated my knee, one of the things I would do is because I couldn't bend it for a while, is I would just, because I went to the physical therapist and they put stim on my quad, you know, the, the little pads that make yeah. the muscle flex. 
which which will reduce some of the some of the atrophy. Definitely doesn't reduce most of it, but it reduces some of it. But I noticed that when you know she was doing that, and so then when at home, when at home, excuse me, when I went home, what I would do throughout the day is, you know, I couldn't bend my knee, but I would just flex my quad really hard. Like every thirty minutes or so, I'd make sure to like connect that muscle and squeeze. And that's got to help, right? That's got to help more than than not well, doing anything at all. Yeah, and I, I mean, I would focus on this as an opportunity to work on other parts of your body and really develop better patterns overall, right? So it's not just like, you know, sort of using it as like a, an excuse to, well, I'm gonna have to like just just do a bunch of arm exercises, you know, and and do all these things um, that I can do because it's not going to hurt my knee or like, you know, if it's my knee that's injured, like I want to take that time and opportunity to now establish better neural pathways, better connectivity, um, ways that now I can, I can better myself, you know, mobility wise and, and establish, um, you know, better mechanics and just really work on form and things like that, that don't, it's not like I'm, I'm like, I'm I'm afraid of losing gains. You're gonna lose gains. That's like, the other it, thing. Yeah. You know, it's like you can't have that mentality. Um, that's gonna drive you crazy. Uh, just just be okay with it. Is is this is time to recuperate and really work on something else entirely? Mm. This is a hard one for me, and it's hard because I don't I don't have enough information on the person and exactly where this injury came from, what the injury is. Um, well, what did you do with your when you hurt your Achilles? Uh, what were some things you did to kind of maintain well, your sanity? Well, this is uh, what I can do is I can share my experience, right? I can share what I'm going through still currently right now. This is, um, I'm obviously I'm far from over and I've, I've definitely come to grips with that, that this is not going to be a couple month, you know, fix and I'm going to be back to my normal self. So first of all, when I, the, when, when the, my Achilles went, like it, it just popped out of nowhere, right? When I was playing basketball, and the, the first reaction to that is, oh my fuck, I'm, I'm angry, I'm mad, I'm upset, all these emotional things going, I'm in pain, feeling sorry for myself, all this stuff. And then once that all kind of dissipates, then it kind of I kind of start to look at myself and go like, okay, how is all this my fault? You know, what, what, did I, what did I not do or how did I end up in this situation? On all different levels, not just from a physical one, a mental one. How did, how did I get myself in this space and start to look at all the steps uh, that, I, that I didn't do right and, and start to address those and not just literally address like, for example, like uh, having good ankle stability and good strength, foot strength and connection and warming up properly and not maybe pushing myself so fast and hard. Like there's a lot of different things that I didn't do right. So I'm looking at all the things that I didn't do right in the first place. And I'm, and I'm definitely meditating on that. Like how, how do I not allow this type of a situation, even if it's not the same injury, how do I not let the same type of situation happen to me somewhere else on my mm -hmm. body? The other thing that I, I, I have also had to do is realize that this is just my my body. You know what I'm saying? There's so much more of me than my my muscles, my mobility, mm -hmm. and my gains. And uh, I, that is not me. There's so much more of me. And there's so much more of me that needs fixing and that needs work. And and I look at things, and this is my the my probably my religious background as a kid growing up that goes like, okay, what is the message in this? Hmm. What, what other parts of my life was I ne neglecting and I wasn't putting energy into that I kind of now have plenty of time to because- Like you got forced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like it was, and that's kind of how I look at stuff like that. You know, forget what you believe in as far as whether that was intended to happen to me or not, but it does give me this new perspective of- okay, let me look at other things that I, I can control since I can't control that. I cannot make my Achilles better tomorrow. I can do things. I can put things into practice to help it heal faster, to make sure it doesn't happen again to me. And all those things in practice, which I would suggest that you do for mm -hmm. whatever your injury is, is take care of the injury, do the steps that you're supposed to do to recover the injury and then to prevent it in the future. But as far as the sanity piece goes, well, there's a lot of different things that the way I'm looking at this. One, I know I've done this a bajillion times where I've, you know, not trained really hard for a while, then got back to it. Like it, your body, like you get your gains back really fast. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you go from, I mean, especially if you go from hypertrophy to atrophy because of like an injury, 
it bounces back really yeah. fast. Yeah, really quick. It's 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 really hard to to reach new PRs and to reach like new levels of fitness in your body. But if you lose it, it's really easy to get back to where you were. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, right? I call it muscle memory. And there's some science to, to, to supports why that happens, but it's definitely widely observed. Yeah. Right. It happens in everybody. I so, like to working on the mental piece, which you're you're bringing up, like as as far as like something. You could self-reflect and, and use that time maybe that you were like really in the gym for like an hour or whatever. And now it's like shortened because like it, maybe you don't need to spend as much time on that. Maybe you could use that time to really, you know, apply it towards something else like relationships or, you know, education or, you know, something right. else. That's so finding much. meaning. What you're doing is you're finding meaning in a tragedy. Like right, something right. that happened. What's the meaning that I can find? And otherwise it just sucks. Right. Otherwise, yeah. it's just terrible. Right, and you're, yeah. and then and I'm going down the rabbit hole of feeling sorry for myself and the victim role versus right. looking at this as a gift, as hard as and crazy as that may sound. Like this is a gift to me that I no longer have this distraction of playing basketball, snowboarding, and building a bunch of muscle because I literally physically can't do that right now. So now I have all this, something that was so quote unquote important to me. Now I have all this time that I don't, I can't spend doing that. That now can get allocated to some other part of my life. Mm-hmm. Where should that be spent now? So then now I've been meditating on that, like really trying to reflect on where, where, what parts of my life w- was I potentially sacrificing for those selfish desires to look a certain way, to mm-hmm. jump so high, run so fast, mm-hmm. or be so mobile which are all, I think, okay goals and okay to be important in your life. But dealing with an injury now, I am look- I look at it completely different. So that's how I've come to grips with where I'm at right now. And I'm kind of weird too. I tend to like go to the extreme because of that. Like I've been joking with the boys that I'm going to embrace my Brad Pitt body right now, <laughs> right? And it's like- that I can fight be- club body. Right. I, yeah. there, absolutely, I know. Like, it's my Achilles, my chest, my shoulders, my biceps aren't broken. I could be building the hell out of them right now if I wanted to. I could re- I could be hitting them good, and I could have a great upper body right now and just shitty calves. I spent most of my life with that, so that's not a big deal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's just it. To me, that's not that important. So I even have let – I've really shifted my focus on other aspects of my life so much that I'm not really worried about that. The, I mean, I've already proven what I can do to my body, what levels – what extreme levels that I of mobility and with – physique what i can do like so it's not that's not important to me right now so to me that's where i'm at in my life with my injury and how i'm personally dealing with it i can't completely speak for you because i don't know where you're at or how long you've been training sometimes you know sometimes the other silver lining on something like this is you're injured you're forced to not be able to work out anyway when you are healed you're starting from a new position and sometimes it's easier to go in a different direction because of that and go okay well Now I'm just going to focus on purely on mobility. Whereas before I was so afraid of losing my strength gains that I didn't want to focus purely on mobility. Well, now I'm at such a poor starting point anyway. Why not start from scratch but really work on mobility so that when I move forward, I have better ranges of motion, better form, better technique. This is exactly what I did with my last kind of injury. My last one was more nagging pain than an actual real acute injury like I just had with the Achilles. And it came off of from all the bodybuilding, all the bodybuilding, all the excessive calories and pushing my body to get bigger. My body was rebelling. I was my elbows. I had crazy gall. It was just absolutely painful. Low back was starting to bother me. Knees. I couldn't squat all the way down ass to grass. I mean, my body was kind of for it was at its limit right there. And I was like, okay, well, let me go the complete opposite way. So I, I took all that energy that I was putting into trying to be this big buff guy all the time to being super hyper mobile. And I got all kinds of incredible benefits from it. And so now I'm trying to intertwine all of those. So yeah, maybe look at the the injury as less of as a, a poor me and a scared thing of I'm going to lose gains. And how do I make sure I have mobility of like, m- let me look at other aspects of my life that I can improve on. And the other aspects of your life doesn't necessarily have to be outside of health and fitness. You absolutely can still be in health and fitness, and you can improve upon other things. So I think that's how I would handle it. Next up is K Cody RN. Is the best philosophy to bulk then cut? I okay. So yes, in a sense, but we don't. I'm not a big believer in these long, massive bulks. Well, but when I tend to start people off who want to get leaner, I tend to try to get their metabolism to speed up a little bit. So I typically will get them to focus on resistance training and I'll bump their calories up a little, little by little, because then it gives me more room to cut. Now, the opposite 
you know, it depends on the individual. Like if yes. you're coming, if if you're coming, and that's just because most people, right? Yeah. If you're already but, overweight, I don't think it's a good idea. Well, well, not well not so, no, not necessarily. Yeah, it not depends. Not it, what it depends more on is where Sal's going. Yeah, like if, I, if I you come so- to me and you're a bodybuilder guy and you're stuffing your face all the time. And you're already eating three, five, four thousand calories, and you're trying to gain weight. Right, to, I'm cutting you first. Then I'm going to cut you. Yes. But it's just most people are not like that. Like sometimes you get overweight people who come to you. you I think it's you could actually make this very simple and easy for people to be able to to get this. And you just you got to understand where your where your body is, the amount of activity that you're doing, and like, do you fall in the normal range of caloric intake for that? So do you have a really healthy metabolism? Is your metabolism really working for you? You need to first figure that out. And then this answer becomes a lot easier. So if you're somebody, and I'll give you a comparison of, and I and I pill my poor girl Jessica. I keep picking on her all the time, but this is such great analogies for things like this. She is, you know, uh, at a hundred and she's gonna hate me for using her weight right now too. I feel so bad. She's she's at 168 pounds right now, which is the heaviest that she's ever been, and she's only eating 16 to 1800 calories. Then you have somebody like Melissa. And both these girls, by the way, have competed. We consider themselves competitors, athletes, really good shape, both train hard, everything, good mechanics, all these great things working for them. And Melissa is about 100, and I think she's around 115 or so. I don't know where her last weight check-in is. And she's getting ready for a show. And she's eating 2,000 calories. And she's in a cut to get on stage. And she's only like 118 pounds. And she's eating more than this other girl. Now, that those are complete, two completely different metabolisms, and I would handle them completely different on my advice based off of that. So you first need to figure out, based off of your weight, your height, your activity level, you know, um, how much you're training, are you in a, a healthy, normal range the way you're consuming, or are you way above, or are you way below that, and that would that would decide. Mm-hmm. How I would take this yeah. person, uh, start this person mm-hmm. off. Now on the fl- and on the flip side, if you if you're a guy that's like pounding calories all the time, and so this is you, me, yeah. So me, one of the greatest pieces of advice is ever given to myself was to cut for the first time in my life. For 15 years of my life, I've been trying to push more that's calories right. down my face, never wanting to lean down because I never wanted to be skinny. I've always wanted to be a bigger guy, but the first time that I really cut and cut hard, it was like mind blowing especially when you went back to yes, eating more cuz then when i went back to eating more your it was, body just assimilated oh it. yeah my body started to put yeah, gains same on thing like happened I'd to never me. seen before same exact thing happened to me i'd never got i'd never gotten my body super super shredded and when i finally did and commit to it when i went back to eating a normal amount muscle just came on my body. It's literally the opposite of what you try to do with someone with a slow metabolism. Well, it's like this, I'm it's like I'm taking someone with a slow metabolism and I'm trying to ramp it up so it makes it easier to burn to 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 burn fat. But then when you take someone with a really high metabolism because they're constantly you know feeding themselves and lifting weights or whatever, I got to make it a little bit more efficient so that you don't have to feed yourself 6000 calories just to gain weight. Right. Mm-hmm. And this is this is actually It's a reverse reverse. I diet. like this I like <laughs> this topic because it's actually the opposite of what most people do and this is, you know, one of the this is extending the conversation that I was having with Jessica about this was, you know, most people that are are always trying to lose weight do this. They're on and off the wagon. That's normal. We all agree and know that, right? That people very rarely does it. You wouldn't have a problem. You wouldn't be uh, not in shape if you were very very consistent year in year out. So what most people do is they fall off their training regimen and they always fall off their diet also. And so anytime they've ever started exercise they're in a cut because they always want to lose body fat, right? They're always overweight. They're never where they want to be at their goal. They've never seen that, you know, lean body that they've always wanted or thought. And they, so every time they decide it's time to get back in the gym, they also clean up their diet and start eating less calories. And that's of course what initially gives them that first, you know, week or two of seeing change in results. Like no shit. If you all of a sudden move way more and you start lifting weights and eating less calories, Mm -hmm. you're going to lose body fat, but you have no idea what a bad swing on your metabolism you're about to do right now. In fact, you'd be far better off slowly. Okay. Introducing the exercise and, or maintaining the calories where where you're at or potentially Increasing them, which is like what Sal's saying. I like, and that's one of the things that I'm, I'm having a hard time because Jessica came to me and she goes, Because she wants to lose weight right now. Right. She's like, Adam, I'm in, the, I'm in the heaviest I've ever been in my life. She's like, I've never been here before. 
you know, I need to, I need to get down. What do I do? And I'm like, okay, what I want you to do is we're going to increase your calories. And she's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, no way. That's the opposite yeah. of what I thought I was supposed right. to do. And I'm like, I just, I need you to trust me mm-hmm. that this is what, and so now mind you, I've known her for a very long time and, you know, she knows what she's kind of done. And so she absolutely is. And, and we're now months into this conversation. And so she's seeing her body putting muscle, but we have not lost any weight. So she's mm-hmm. been, we're on, she's on week seven of listening to me and the way we're doing mm-hmm. this right now. Get her metabolism. And we're, up. we're slowly. And, and, ha- and what are, cal- how much of an increase over seven weeks has she seen in calories? So right now she's up to 21 to 2200 calories. Where is she at? I got her between 16 and 1800. Oh, wow. So she's at 21 that's, to 22. That's crazy. That's a big jump. In a seven week period. Right. Well, there's there's also tricks that I do to kind of mitigate some of that, right? So I also slowly increase NEAT. So I don't want to push her body hard with cardio. I don't want to do anything like that. But I want to create a little more activity in her life to make up for a little bit of the extra calories that we're doing because mm-hmm. I really want to push her calories up a lot higher before we come back the other way down. So I'm, and I'm also slowly increasing her intensity week over week. So she comes in, sees me once a week, and we, and we work out together. And I've told her, I said, listen, let me be the pace car of your intensity. Any, so your hardest workout's always mm-hmm. going to be with me. I'm going to give you a hard workout. Don't ever exceed. Don't try and top me. With the, type, the, the way you feel from this workout, I want you to mimic that for the week between we see each other. And then the next week, I add a little more volume. So I'm teaching her to not you know, be competitive. She's use the appropriate amount yeah, of intensity. She's a very high, high competitive athlete. So I know- I know she type A? Yeah. Oh, she's it's type all, it's A, always and, a type and, a, and a high competitive athlete. So you get a, a high competitive athlete and type A personality- they don't lack motivation. No, you know what I'm saying? They want to overdo it. They, they want to overdo it. So the conversation is definitely unique. You have to, to put the reins on them. Yeah. yeah right, right, right. And, 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 you know, here's another thing, too, when it comes to bulking and cutting. If your ultimate goal is to lose body fat, you do what, we can, what we're talking about. But then also intermittently cut and bulk, bulk or rather do these mini cuts and mini bulks. So rather mm-hmm. than doing a 12-week period of just cutting, do like two or three-week periods of cutting and interrupt them with, uh, you know, four to five days or a week of maintenance or a slight bulk, and that'll help mitigate that met- metabolic adaptation where your metabolism slows down so much to where now you're eating a thousand calories, and just to maintain your body weight. That's a terrible position to be in. Next up is Mahin R6. Does working out, including bulking and cutting, affect your sex drive positively or negatively? Mm. Good question. Good health affects your sex drive positively. Right. Bad health affects it negatively. Okay? So that being said, both of bo- them both of them can harm it. Both, both of, of them can help oh, it. That's it's right. all related <laughs> to hormones. Yeah. So I mean, it's all yeah, you're going to see that if, you know, if if you're not working out, like it's definitely going to affect, you know, like your your sex life. I mean, that's just that's Well, this just is a great transition from that question because this is exactly yeah. like this, yeah. right? Yeah. I, so, I I've every time I especially when I train older people, one of my favorite things about training older people is they tend to be very blunt. And in, every single time, like two or three months into our training, they'd come up to me. They'd be like, um, so uh, I, I'm noticing that I'm feeling different from my workouts. And I'm like, oh, really, Carol? What do you mean? Oh, um, I'm a little bit more like uh, energized. I'm like, oh, yeah, you have more energy. That makes sense. No, 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 no. Like I'm more uh, more vibrant. Yeah. And I'll be like. More feisty. Yeah, and I'll say. You're is more your, colorful. I'll say is your libido, I'll yeah. say, is your libido yeah. higher? And they'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be like, yeah, it's totally normal. Yeah. Or. I'm like revved up. Like this other client that I had actually came up to me and told me, is it normal to be hornier now that I'm lifting weights? I'm like, yeah, it's totally normal. <laughs> 75 year old woman. Um, but if you look at, if you bulk so much that you have too, too many calories and your health is poor, you're not, your sex drive is going to drop. Mm. If you cut too much where your calories are too low. Um, and you're not getting enough calories, and your body feel you're, you're going to feel crappy because your health is poor. Your sex is also yeah, your sex drive is also going to drop. State of too much stress yeah. is going to affect your. Sex Remember, life. sex drive is it exists to drive you to procreate. Remember that that's what it exists for ultimately, right? It's to it's to push you to mate to make uh, a, a, another human being. If your body senses that you are in a state of poor health or in an environment of poor health where there's a lot of stress or you're not getting enough food or you're overworking, you're just working out so much and so hard, your body will literally put the brakes on whether on you being able to procreate, especially if you're a woman, much more so if you're a woman than if you're a man because remember, the woman bears the burden of having this baby, burden or blessing, however you look at it, of being pregnant with this child. So we actually see this with female athletes all the time. When they overwork and undereat, 
they, they lose their period. Mm-hmm. It's because their body's like, oh no, we don't want to get pregnant in this environment of low calories and overwork because if you do, that could mean death for you and your child. So we're going to stop mm-hmm. your ability do you pers- to have a child. Do you personally notice more more in one than the other? Because I have this like, so, and this is something that I've actually noticed a lot because of uh, you know the extreme cuts and bulks of competing. Uh, I've been able to kind of really pay attention to this and I've done it so many times now that I've been able to kind of measure like, oh, okay, wow, every time I get to this point, my sex drive gets fucked, right? So when I am when I start really, really o- aggressively bulking to where, you know, my body fat percentage creeps up over 15%, I start to feel this kind of dip in my sex mm-hmm. drive for sure. Uh, it's not huge, but I notice a difference. And then when I cut, really hard i notice once i get like sub six percent i notice the same thing in fact like katrina and i the the she used to hate like the last week or two of training because like we're not having (laughs) i have no sex drive whatsoever before i get on stage so to me the bulking and cutting thing if you can stay in a very healthy range of body fat percentage um i think there's great benefits to both of it positively so, if, you know, for a male, so I would think somewhere in between the 9 to 13% body fat range, whether you're cutting or bulking, it, it will should keep that sex drive feeling mm-hmm. really good. Uh, exceeding that uh, up or, or up or down, I think, could have a negative effect. Yep. So. I'll tell you what, though. If you were to look at all forms of exercise, all forms of exercise, done properly, of course, because you do any form of exercise improperly, you're going to have negative effects. But done properly, no form of exercise comes close, not even in the same universe, as resistance training for Im- increasing or improving your libido. Oh, especially because it, lifting heavy weights. It affects, your t- it affects your hormones positively in a very anabolic way, men and women. Yeah. Women, the same thing. And, then the, and of course, there's a psychological component, right? When your body's shaping and feeling more firm or stronger, more muscular, of course, you feel sexier or whatever. So when I cut, sometimes my sex drive goes up, but I think it's part of it is because I feel more attractive maybe because I feel leaner and I kind of look better. That might be a part of it. But from a physiological standpoint, weight training will affect your, your, your sex drive far more, far more effectively than anything else. In fact, you know, when I, when I coach female clients, I'll, I'll ask them many times like, okay, pay attention to your libido. You don't need to necessarily report it to me, but if your libido starts to increase, that's probably a good sign that your metabolism is boosting and we're, and we're building some muscle and getting stronger. Not always, but probably. Yeah. So definitely has a positive effect on your sex drive. And this may be why gyms are such horny places. Dude. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a meat market in there. I, every time I go to one to five reps... It's just like this immediate surge. Like, I agree. Morning boners. Oh, there dude. you are. I didn't notice this until just recent with the whole going off of testosterone, you know, when, and I, was, I remember sharing this with Sal. I was like, dude, you know, it's crazy. Of all the cool things that I've done, you know, to increase my hormone levels, nothing have I felt like just being consistent with like heavy squatting or deadlifting. Mm-hmm. Like when that's in my routine and, and I didn't notice it until I stopped it again. Like I was doing it really good because yeah. I was doing everything to try and like boost it. And I was starting to slowly feel better. I was like, Oh cool. And then I get, you know, we had a busy week or two. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of fell off my weightlifting and then I was like, Oh shit, you know what? My libido has definitely been down this week. I didn't even think about that till mm-hmm. now. And I'm like, oh, whatever, you know, maybe it's just, a, maybe it's stress, maybe we're flying, maybe whatever. I'm thinking of all these other excuses. And then all of a sudden I'd go train a real heavy leg day or something. And then I was like, it's literally, dude, that night, like libido back up again. Mm-hmm. And I feel great. Like the next It's so day. funny. Like there's two things for me. So like, yeah, like lifting like heavy rep, like heavy weight from that one to five rep range, but also like my, so my sex drive goes up, but then also like my listening to heavy metal increases. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I want to listen to like really angry music. It's just like, they both like it's intertwined. Go hand in Have hand. you ever yeah. had sex to that kind of music? No, I could, no, that are either, kind of weird. Are either one of you guys, uh, music, listeners while you guys are getting down no but i have tried the whole brain fm for action the oh, what yeah, that's, that's that was that was champion which one that, that is brain champion. fm like focus i know i did the same thing and it just it, it I, distracted you no i what? couldn't it was weird i couldn't finish, you couldn't finish. 
I couldn't finish, wow. which is well, you know, I mean, you it's like, switch it over. I mean, I guess that's Barry a good wine thing. at the end. I guess that's some like, people yeah. might think yeah. that's. I just a good picture thing. you making love different and weird too, though. So it doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how do like, I make? How, how do you? How I do you? Know. I just, I just, Adam, when you picture me making love, <laughs> how do you? I feel like I want you to draw it on like I just, the board because I, I don't picture yeah. you at all. I picture. <laughs> I picture lots of lights and tools and stuffed animals and costumes. Like I picture that. Like, tools. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I feel like that maybe <laughs> <doesn't>... <laughs> strange helicopter right. positions. You yeah. know, no, stuff like no. that. Yeah. No. And you I feel like Justin and I like make love. It's yeah. like dancing for it's us. Like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're more like we dance. I in got the bedroom. you, girl. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I do it all, bro. Yeah. You're, no, you're, I, you're like more like a laboratory. That's why I feel like you you go in there. And there's like <laughs> goggles get put on and check like, out this, this new device. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The rubber gloves come out. Like oh, like oh no, it's all it's all it's all emotion and soul and connection, bro. This queen, no. you know, over the floor. Oh my God, make sure you know this. Uh, a thing about resistance training that's interesting that I want to mention is it does increase anabolic hormone levels, but it also increases the receptor density that that those hormones attach to. So, if you're a guy and you're lifting weights, and you or you just start lifting weights, even though your testosterone levels may not go up, so let's say you test them and they don't go up, the receptors that that testosterone attaches to actually upregulate. So you actually start to utilize more of that testosterone in a, in a more effective way. And so you feel like you have higher testosterone because you've upregulated those receptors. So it's actually twofold or two ways that resistance training may improve that, that effect from, from your hormones. Next question is from Teach and Train. What is your opinion on teachers or people in professional positions competing? Do you think it's inappropriate to have staged pictures online? Or do you think it's an outlet to show others how strong you can be and that you're more than just a teacher? Some people may think it's inappropriate to show off your body when you teach kids. Well, this is a fun question. Yeah. It's a fun question. That's I think a little it, on the I think fringe. it depends on the picture, right? Like, mm. you don't want to necessarily... Yeah, there's tasteful ways to do it, Well, there's right? that one pose in bikini, yeah, but, which I think is so stupid. Bikini is tough. What's that butt pose they do in bikini? Well, I love that you, I love you guys right so, away hey. with this way, because t- this is my opinion. It de- here's It doesn't really depend on anything. It's really, there's a cause and effect to everything that we do. Mm. And if you're a teacher and you put bikini pictures up on your Instagram, um, it could have a positive effect on some people's lives. It may motivate a couple of people to go to the gym. It might do some. I mean, if I was a student, I'd be stoked. Might get you a couple of dates. <laughs> yeah, it might get some teacher. Might get some kids in class more engaged in what you're talking about <laughs> up there. There's a lot Mrs. of Mrs. Johnson. But then you also might piss off some moms that are extremely conservative and that are concerned with that or you might make somebody really jealous who yeah. has to work with you all the time so no matter how you look at this i mean even ourselves right mm. us us putting our stuff out there everything that we post out there there is a cause and effect of that and you have to take that into consideration and be okay with both sides of that now what's right. your personal opinion let's say you were a teacher would you post pictures of well, yourself? Uh, let me tell you this. I'll tell you. Th- th- here's why this is hard for us, or hard for me to answer it like that. Because I got to be honest. I don't even know if I'd be an Instagram person if I if we didn't have this current. That's job. a true. Yeah. That's a good point. Because I, I, I don't think it's, I would it's be. not that important to me. Now I'm not knocking people that it is and that that they really enjoy it and everything like that. But I, trust me, I see all the bad in it for sure. Like I mean, the, I've. I, the the posting that I do on social media right now, like the way I kind of look at it for me, it's like, okay, this will be cool because it'll be an album maybe one day that I can kind of look back and like, oh, I remember all the like memory lane for me and maybe my kids mm-hmm. can see it later on. But then again, you think about that, right? Mm. Your kids and you can see it later on. And if you post something up there, like that stuff yeah. lives and can't you make your Can't you make your account private anyway? You know what I mean? If you're a teacher and, and you're worried about this, sure. can you just make it private? Just you so can, you can, but show then your what's, what's the point of posting pictures of yourself? Just show your it? friends and family. You're right. It sounds like somebody who just wants other people they to want look attention. at them. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what it sounds like. And it, you know what? There's a little bit of, it's not equal necessarily. Like if a man is flexing, you know, on his Instagram and showing everybody, probably not going to be interpreted the same as if it's a woman yeah. in her bikini doing some of her that's poses. True. Now, and some of the poses that they do too, like the bikini poses. Like the butt pose, that's not even a muscle pose. That's just literally turning around, bending over and showing my butt, which 15 years ago used to be considered porn, basically. Right. But now it's a pose in a in an event that you're doing to show off your your glute, ham, tie-in or whatever. I, hey, listen, I, I think t- to each their own, we're all definitely people that agree that everybody should have the rights. Just I think that's all you have to think of, of what's yeah. the cause and effect. I'm not going to sit there 
and worry about somebody else and what they're doing with their lives and like whether that I'm, I'm not gonna sit there and judge that like because there's I could see I could see all the positives too yeah, like you're for, not going to but the parents are gonna judge it 100 percent right yeah. and and you as a teacher should think about that yeah so and you should just what you're putting out will get evaluated right so you just have to know that and so if you're comfortable with that and you're comfortable having parent teacher conferences where you're sitting and you're trying to be super professional and yet they know all that on your Instagram and they go through that they're gonna go through it. Right. And that could be a very negative thing. Now will. you could you could flip this, right? And there could be a very positive thing. So I know something that I experienced when I was posting all of my pictures up there and starting to build my Instagram was because I am competitive with myself, because I'm a man of my word, I, I like to think that I have a lot of integrity. I'm if I speak something, if I say I'm gonna do something. I follow it. And I never felt the accountability like I felt the accountability when I posted something in the public. Mm -hmm. It's if I if I say something to Katrina that I'm going to do this, I'm going to fucking do it. That's because mm -hmm. who I am. If I say something to thousands or hundreds of people, potentially however big your, your Instagram is, that I'm going to do something, I never felt the pressure to do it more than that, which ended up serving me because I was trying to accomplish something. And so for me, if there's some people like, for example, Taylor, who unfollowed me and didn't follow me anymore because he couldn't handle the selfie pics, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if that means I lose, too handsome for if him. I lose a friend of mine to that's no longer going to follow me because I'm putting that stuff out, I was willing to sacrifice n sacrifice that for what it ser the way it served me. So you got to ask yourself that how is it serving you, and is it worth mm. what you potentially could be sacrificing for that? Yeah. And that's going to be different for ang every single person that makes this decision. I, I think certain jobs. You you know, look, you're, you're, if you're a police officer, there's certain things you probably shouldn't say on social media. If you're a teacher, there's probably certain things you shouldn't say or do. Like, I cuss all the time on social media. But if I was I a teacher think, for kids... do you? I don't think it's that you should or you shouldn't say. I think it's you just need to be aware I, well, here's of what, what comes I'm saying. with that. Here's what I'm saying. From my opinion, if I'm a teacher, I am going to do different things on social media knowing that it may impact my my career it may impact my my job so you do whatever the fuck you want this is my own, my own personal opinion but right you I, could get fired you could look I mean, if that's you, the real again thing. if you're a police officer and you want to talk about race relations probably not a good idea to post about that on your social media because you're a cop you know what i'm saying and right, people right. are going to interpret it a particular way you have an opinion and i get that and you're free to have an opinion, but you're not free from the consequences of your opinion. That's, your that's, that's it, right there. Yeah, yeah. And, so and, you just gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be okay with that. Right. That's right. Because even a cop could do that, but boy, you might have a lot of <laughs> rough days at work. You know, that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying. And, but, but you know what? But maybe that's so liberating for you that it feels so good, or you want to do that so bad that it's worth that. Maybe it's worth that for you. Maybe this teacher feels liberated by posting pictures of herself on Instagram or maybe it keeps her I, accountable to staying in shape and that's it's more worth than her job maybe she's like I I care more about that that I could potentially lose my job then, I could always so find another then job she wouldn't ask she's sabotaging yeah, yeah she's sabotaging her career then. she wouldn't even ask this question then she would just do it I, I think this is a, a case of well is this oh, okay it's I, teaching trans yeah well, I think teacher, this is right? a case of wanting your cake and eating it too like yeah. but i like to be a teacher but i know it looks bad but i want to do this also well pick one yeah if you know what you think is going to happen or whatever and you're pretty confident of it pick one which one's more important well to you? i would also i would also dive deeper into you say show others how strong you can be and there's ways you could do that well, well yeah yeah you but know? I, I, I'm, where i'm going with this is i would ask myself why do I care about showing other people how, how people how strong I am? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself that. It's it's there's it, there's probably it's usually self serving, right? Right. So yeah. just just think oh, about yeah, that. You yeah. know, there's there's things for you to kind of ask yourself, and I mean, there is always going to be a cause and effect, and to each their own. But Look, if you I, can totally go through that whole process by yourself. Mm -hmm. You you don't need that that confirmation from everybody. That there's else. there's also and, and there's also too. I think you know levels there's a spectrum here right there's extreme like you were mentioning the ass shots like can you show a good a good shot of you in a bikini and of and, course and presenting it and then presenting yeah, like wear, dude this is like th this is how what i hire what i try classy to, for what sure. i tried to do when i was posting my shirtless shameless selfies that i was posting i tried to use that as a way to teach and show people things like Watch what I'm doing with my physique, and I would underneath you would I would list my water intake, my carbohydrate. I would list everything. I was trying to show people like how you can manipulate the body and the things that I was doing exercise. So there's ways for you to do it. I think that it can be tasteful, 
and it doesn't have to be. Dude, you if, just got to take in consideration that you absolutely listen, could offend. Some if people. I was a fem- if I was a teacher, and I wanted, to, especially female teacher, because again, I think the guys get away with this more than, than the women would. But if I was a female teacher and I wanted to show the hard work I've done and show the strength. You could show videos of you lifting heavy weights. You could show your bicep flexing. You could show you doing exercises where people could see your delts. You could show one just from a normal front shot bikini on stage. Like, there's a lot of things you can do that aren't going to be, but you know, show the ass shot or the real sexy stuff or the, you know, you know how you post pictures. You can definitely make them look one way or the other. And I'm pretty sure parents, and again, this is my opinion, but I, I think parents would be supportive. If they saw that you're in the gym lifting weights and that's mm-hmm. what you post, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? They'd probably be like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I think, I th- yeah, I think they're totally. very easily you can you can post stuff like what we're talking about and parents be like very receptive to it, right? right. Versus the other way around. So there, there's that fine line. And only you know what that fine yeah, line is. Yeah, and if is, you right? kept that in mind as you're posting it and like the angles and, you know, it all matters at that point. Yeah, yeah. and here's another good example. It'd be like, you know, people post pictures of themselves partying, you know, like oh, drinking right. and getting smashed. Probably not a good idea if you're a teacher. Yeah. You probably don't want to post pictures like that. Well, even if you're, if you're trying to get hired, it's like now, like, you know, employers can go through all that stuff and they get a certain perception of you. So it's just, you just got to know that whatever you put out there yeah. is, is available. That's uh, it. I think I'm, we're looking at her page right now. And I think for the most part, it's, no, I don't it's, see anything there. It's yeah, crazy. no, I think it's pretty tasteful. I think, yeah. I think you're probably a good looking fit. Uh, teacher that I'm sure there's some moms that hate on you for that. <laughs> oh, you say, yeah. Welcome to life, right? No, there's nothing there that's scandalous. Yeah, you know no. what I'm saying? Like, I think uh, for the most part, all of her pictures are pretty damn tasteful and just fine. Um, but no matter what, even if they are, there's people are going to, when you're in a profession like this, like where you're a teacher, you're going to be you, scrutinized a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to get, I mean, look, we get scrutinized big oh, time yeah. because we're in the health and fitness. Oh, my God. If the, let me put it this way. If the Attractive average. Attractive people if, just get like scrutinized. If the know? average person was eating, like walking on the street and eating like a, a, a cupcake, right? Nobody would give a shit. But if, if, if you're a fitness person and you get seen on the street eating cupcake, you're going to be scrutinized a little bit differently. Oh, kind of similar, right? Big time. Exactly like mm-hmm. that. Just like, uh, to the point where, the, I mean, we think about that sometimes. Like, I wouldn't. It's so weird. I've caught myself before because we've always got somebody with a camera kind of following us around these days, right? So there's been times where I might have had a, a monster drink, right? And I'm like, I, I, I consciously move it out of the picture. And I, and I think to myself, I'm like, that's really shitty that I have to do that. But I have to do that because then all of a sudden I know that you if have someone, to like defend yourself. Right. Then I'm going to have to defend myself and explain like, yeah, you know, I do it. But I openly talk that I do do that just like you openly talk mm-hmm. about being a bikini competitor but the fact that i put it out there on social media now i have to explain and i don't have the fucking energy to explain myself so that's the other thing you got to ask yourself too is like when you're if you're getting if you're finding yourself defending yourself a lot is it worth it yeah, yeah. if you're is it worth it to put a picture up that you're even if you're proud of it and you want to show your friends or like that if you're taking on more bullshit than you are at that point i'm like fuck these people i don't even want to deal with them i'll exactly. block, get rid of them and unfriend them then you know what i'm saying if they're yeah. like that i just recently did that by the way i just recently went through my Facebook, my private Facebook and like deleted like a hundred, a hundred people. That feels so good. You know what I want? I love doing You know why I did that though? Because our, because my, our public, you know, personas or whatever are growing. Mm -hmm. And you know, I really only, on my Facebook, I only want close friends and family. I don't need all these acquaintances, acquaintances on there. Right. That's for Instagram. Yeah. That's for Instagram and stuff like that. They can get a hold of me and it's like, you know, I got pictures of my kids on there because it's my private Facebook. So I just went through and deleted about a hundred. Ah, oh, felt so good. I'm gonna know. go through I'm, and delete I'm another hundred. Same thing. I want to limit it to like fifty. <laughs> you just yeah. crushed hell of people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, what did I do to sell? No, you, blocking. You know what's funny? Like crazy. I, you know what's funny? I actually did a post first, and I said, "Hey, listen, I got to go through here, delete some people because you know my public persona is growing. Please don't take a person." I explained myself, blah, blah blah. And then the next day when I did it, people were commenting, "I'm so glad I made the cut." <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> It's so oh, great. Brother. Hey, you know what? Someone asked me the other day. I want to make sure before you sign off, I want to make sure that we tell people uh, if you listen to this show and you don't know how to uh, get your question answered uh, on Instagram, the Mind Pump Media Instagram page, uh, there's a little image of our Mad Mike logo. It's a pretty cool logo that gets put, posted up once a week. 
And that's where we pick these questions from. So if you don't know how that's right. how to get your questions answered, go to the Instagram. Mind go Pump. post on the Qua. Right. Go to Mind Pump Media IG. That's where you post underneath the Qua post uh, of the logo of the Mad Mike. And then if you want to find us or follow us, this is where we're most active. So this is, if you send me something on my Facebook, I don't even check my uh, Facebook, but once maybe every six months. So. Yeah. Uh, we do. We're very active on all of our Instagrams. So you can find Sal at Mind Pump Sal. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me, Mind Pump Adam. And don't forget, uh, we have a bunch of free guides that we've put together recently that are absolutely for free. A few of them are a few pages long. You can find all of these guides. We have a flabby arm guide, build your butt guide, your your legs, your chest, calves. Uh, you can find all of them at mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.